Alright, y'all got it out of me. This is the video I wanted to make the least. Simply because I don't understand half these things. I'm not smart enough for the math behind all this junk. I'm Brenzo, and today we're talking engines. We're not just talking one type of engine. We're talking every type of engine I can reasonably think about. And it's gonna, well, it's gonna take a while because we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of every single thing that I can think to use, what we're gonna use in the Ragnarok, why we're gonna use it, what we're prioritizing in the Ragnarok, and what we're kind of just going for all around with the engine on it. So, stick around, maybe learn something, maybe don't, because, like, I don't know how half these things work anyway, so you probably know them better than me. Let's get into it. So the first thing we have to discuss with any type of engine, it doesn't matter if it's steam, jet, fuel, electric base, or whatever, it doesn't matter what your engine is. There are two variables, or I guess metrics, that are insanely important. And that is power over material and power over volume. These two things are inherently, in most engines, trade-offs. If you aim for a higher power per material, I probably said it wrong, but whatever. If you aim for higher power per material, then you're probably going to get lower power per volume. It's just how it tends to work. Efficient engines are not space efficient engines, and space efficient engines are not fuel efficient. That's how engines are kind of a big trade off in anything you do. So here we see this is just an injector engine. It has stupid low power per material at full rev but it has crazy high power per volume. So like when you're building a ship, you have to think about this kind of stuff. If you're making something super small, then you really can't afford to be efficient. You, you just need all the power you can get because your propellers are gonna be expensive to run. Your weapons might be expensive to run. So on smaller stuff, you tend to prioritize power per volume, as well as on things that have a huge, huge power draw. Power per material is better to prioritize when you're trying to make something that can cruise on like as little resources as possible or can stay in a fight for a really long time if you're trying to out-material the enemy. Things like that. So these are the most important things we can focus on in engines. Obviously, how to get power per material, well, it shows it to you. It's just power divided by material per second and volume taken. Pretty simple stuff. So. Let's start with fuel engines, my least favorite. I will not lie to you. I am biased against fuel. I don't like fuel engines. I liked them back when they were first implemented in the game and they were super easy to make. But then they added steam and jets <laughs> and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I've kind of fallen out in the fuel meta. I know that there's two main ways to make fuel and we'll discuss them as we go down this, this row which is low RPM with a lot of superchargers or high RPM with a lot of turbos, as well as staged engines. Stage engines are wizardry that I simply cannot build, and I will not be talking about stage engines. If you don't know what a stage engine is, with fuel engines, turbochargers get benefit from how much exhaust gas is running through them. So if you have like three engines in a row and they all feed their exhaust into the next engine, then as you go down the lines, your engine's gonna get more and more efficient because it's reusing that exhaust instead of wasting it. Just a quick rundown. So, let's talk fuel. The simplest, the easiest, besides injectors, because injectors are just plug and play, is supercharger spam. Now, obviously this is not great supercharger spam, but the easiest way to make an engine that is crazy efficient is to put down a fuel engine and generator. Oh, wrong button put down some cylinders and cram the thing with superchargers on your carbs. And then you just go in, you find out what your ideal RPM here, here it's like around 50. And then you just set your max RPM to that. And bam, you have a high PPM and low PPV, power per material, power per volume, that's what I'll be saying in the future, engine. Supercharger spam is the way to go if you don't need a lot of power, you just need to be real efficient. This is good for like engines that need to cruise at low RPM and just chug you around the map, things like that. Turbochargers, as I said, 
Turbochargers are wizardry to me. I still don't get them entirely. I don't know how to build with them. I'm not going to claim to know how to build with them. Just, I'm being honest with you. Turbochargers are kind of the inverse of superchargers. They make you more efficient at high RPM. So as you can see here, I've smacked two turbochargers on here, and they obviously connect to carbs, white to carb, black to cylinder, and they act as exhausts for some, and others take exhausts. These are uh, normal turbochargers. These don't have the uh, external exhaust input for staging. So these turbos can't be staged. So don't ask me to explain that to you, because I can't. <laughs> As you can see, this is more efficient at the top RPM than the supercharger engine, which was at 420, 558. These are not good engines by any means. I'll show you a good engine in a second. And the final fuel is injectors. With injectors, you have a cease concern for anything regarding efficiency. You are power per volume max. You have no care in the world. And the awesome thing about superchargers is they're really, not superchargers, <laughs> injectors is they're really crazy compact. So you can build an injector engine that doesn't have external exhaust, just has radiators, and you can cram it into like, this is a three by three. You could do five by five, seven by seven, whatever. You can make a bunch of little tiny engines. A great example, or well, a good example is uh, Borderwise's Titan Slung. It uses this a lot. I say it's not great because his engines I think are inefficient. I think it's just really injector spam, and you could probably eke a little more PPM out of those. But it's a, it's a good example of this idea, is he has this sort of layout just in a row on his ship, and this lets his engines be very redundant, and that's a big, big feature of what we're going to be talking about today is redundancy. But anyway, so this is easy, small, compact, this PPV is insane, it's like 100 and that's the extent of what I can build. <laughs> I can't build much more than just scaling these ideas up. This is someone's engine I pulled from the workshop. I think it's called Ideal Fuel Engine. Let's see if I can find the guy. Ideal Fuel Engine on the workshop. I can't remember who makes it, but this is a great example of a optimized fuel engine. This thing is optimized for both PPV and PPM, if I'm right. So let's find the, the guy. Where's the guy? Where are you, sir? Okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. So you can see here, this engine at max RPM has 620 PPM and three or 33 PPV, which is pretty decent. That's pretty good for a fuel engine. It makes 5,000 power. That's pretty good all around. I think this takes five by five space? Let's see. Yeah, this takes a five by five cube. So this is pretty good all-around engine this is using like turbochargers and I think it's using staging so this is completely beyond me I don't get how he made it I'm not gonna try and get how he made it but this is kind of what you can expect with fuel now you can get fuel in the astronomical PPMs you can get fuel up to like I think people have seen 12 1400 but that involves a lot of supercharger spam and things like that which is not what I want I need a lot of power for the Ragnarok Speaking of a lot of power for the Ragnarok, I have the math somewhere. So let me just run this real quick because I want to talk to you about budget before we keep going. The Ragnarok is a big boy and it has a big railgun. It's going to have big lambs, has big motors, and it's going to have shields everywhere. The Ragnarok probably needs somewhere in the range of 120,000 power. This also includes energy draw from the railguns. That's a lot. That's a lot of power that the ship needs. And I kind of can't afford to build a lot of fuel engines, which aren't very redundant to achieve that budget. So that's what we're going for here. We need to hit something that we can have. Here are my qualifications. 120 reasonably and good redundancy. So. Why am I not picking fuel engines? Well, they're not very redundant. This is the only type that's redundant and it's not very power efficient, which we I want a bit of both. This is good, this is great. This just doesn't have the option to go high PPV and it's not very redundant at all. So let's say 
this gets hit by any explosion. All right, let me just tune it down to like 5,000. That's not a five. If this gets hit by any explosion, and oh, I have God mode on, duh. Any explosion, it's gone. Pieces are gone, it's not coming back, and we lost that power. So if you have something like that scaled up and you don't have them in uh, segments, like the Titan Slung does, then you're just gonna lose your engine power if you say have like a big single engine. So I don't wanna do fuel on the Ragnarok. I just can't foresee it working. I can't see a way to easily get like higher than 600 PPM on an also good PPV motor. So I just, I can't do fuel. Uh, I'm not picking it. What about the others? Well, there's not much left. Let's get into them. Side note, how to test your engines. First things first, make sure you're pressing F5 in designer to give materials so you don't run out. Make sure you have some amount of resources for everything. This includes fuel access, batteries, and actual materials. And then just go into defense. Grab a signal jammer ECM, crank it to 20, and this puts all your engines under full load. Why do we want our engines under load? Because engines like steam and fuel have stable power levels. Fuel stable power is determined by its um <clears throat> by its temperature, and steam stable power is determined by I think it's how much pressure it receives and then how much like kinetic. There's a lot of math in steam, but just know that steam and fuel have stable power. And in order to see what that stable power really is, just grab signal jammer ECMs, put them at full power until you see in the bottom right of the screen that your power available has gone to zero. And this means all your engines are under load and you're properly testing them. Without this, you can't even see how efficient your steam engines are. So make sure to do this. This is super important. Okay, on to the next. All right, so what are our, 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 English is so weird. Our alternatives for fuel. Well, an easy one is electric. Pure electric. Using electric engines and RTGs. RTGs are basically free power. Except they have a material cost. So, like, the biggest RTG is 5,000. And it's 405 energy per second. So, there's some math that people have done. And RTGs are actually the most efficient power source in the game, but it is over time. If you have a ship that, say, will never see active combat, so it doesn't have big power draws, it just needs to chug around the map like a cargo ship or a satellite, then RTGs are phenomenal. You pay once and you get free power forever. I think it's once you pass like a like 30 or so minutes of power usage is like RTGs become like infinitely more efficient than anything else in the game. But RTGs and electric engines suffer from not being able to deliver large power when under like combat load. So we won't be using electric engines obviously. And in with electric engines, in order to increase the available power from them, as you can see here this has 1900, you need more batteries. So I think it's per like nine meters of volume, you get like almost 700 power. So that's not that great. I don't know the exact math on that, but I know it's not great. It means your ship will be full of batteries. So electric engines and RTGs, good for cargo ships, kind of bad for everything else. There's other options for electric engines, which we'll talk about in a second, but you shouldn't really rely on electric en engines, god English, for anything other than backup power. They shouldn't be your main power source. Custom jets. Custom jets are fun. You would think, oh, custom jets are things for planes and airships. Why are you talking about them in a boat video? Well, my children, who are oh so unwary and uh, unknowledgeable of the wonders of custom jets. If you put custom jets in your superstructure, you can make the most efficient engines in the game. How do you do that? Custom jets, if you use a ratio of two compressors to one combustor, or even 
three compressors to one combust combustor combustion chamber that's the word then you get an astronomically high ppm as you can see this one is 950 950 i don't think there's many steam engines that can beat that its ppv is pretty meh but like this is easily one of the most efficient engines in the game the only drawback is has it has to be above water they have to be in straight lines, so if you need big power, you're going to occupy a lot of horizontal space on your ship. And they're not very redundant. If you get hit in any part here, your custom jet's turning off. Also, when you're doing this, just make sure you have a generator. This is what allows you to do this. You can tell it to generate power or energy. Set your thrust fraction to 1, so that all the thrust gets used for power. And that's how you do it. So these are very good for efficiency but not very good for redundancy or for like if your ship sinks you're screwed game over you're not getting power anymore from that and you're just going to sink even further but if you're trying to just get some like auxiliary like super efficient power custom jets are a good bet steam turbines these are like all the good of electric with all the good of steam combined because steam turbines only produce energy. And they produce energy very efficiently. So this is a medium, which I don't think is the most efficient steam turbine setup. And it produces about 792 energy per material or PPM. It's the same thing. This is really good. Has decent energy per volume. Only a little better than the custom jet. And these things can make a crap ton of power. Crap ton. You can make them short if you want more PPV and then you still get decent PPM like you can make a, a turbine that looks like this you grab your generator connector turbine middle now pipe connector and you slap a boiler on so like this is now really really good at PPV but pretty bad at um What's it called? A PPM. But this can generate you a lot of battery power. This is really good if you have a lot of rail draw and you need to generate a lot of, um, what's it called, energy. But you don't want to siphon energy off your main engines. So these work great as auxiliary energy generation. As you can see here, this is stabilized. So it's it's kind of half the, uh, the PPM and then not quite. Oh, never mind. Okay, I'll let it update. But as you can see, you can make these pretty strong for how big they are. Make sh and these also have the same drawback of RTGs and general electric engines, where if you want these to be your main source of power, you need a lot of batteries, which sucks. So I can't advise using these for main source of power, but these are excellent, excellent auxiliary sources of power. And this is what we'll be using for our, the Ragnarok's auxiliary power is steam turbines. And finally, the en of the engines I can think of is steam pistons. So I'm not going to give you the full college class on steam piston theory. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of how they work. Steam boilers create pressure. Pressure should always be 10 at the beginning. If it's not at 10, add more boilers. And pressure feeds into the input of a, of a pipe, so or a piston. Here you can see the star is the input and the circle is the output, right? So steam pistons are best done in things called stages. A stage is a setup wherein you have two or three steam pistons. This is in the case of small, medium, we'll talk about large, that all feed from the same input like this. And then it cuts off. And then what you do with this is you take the uh, steam that's outputted. Because you can see here, output pressure is 5.4. And we reuse this. And then this goes to the theoretical next stage. And then we reuse this on another stage of two or three pistons. So this makes really, really efficient steam engines. 
As you can see here, I have two pistons per stage in a four stage engine. The steam is going from 10 to an output of 5.5, getting routed to the next steam pistons, which has input of 5.5, which is obviously the output. And then it works its way down and then it ends up at 0 0.1. I'm pretty sure four stages is kind of the max for like an input amount of steam. So like you can go up to four stages and that's high PPM, or you can go down in stages, which gives you higher PPV. So that's basically how steam works. And obviously this is not a good small engine design. Really good small engine designs are like huge. They're massive. I think they're like 15 by 15 or 17 by 17, but they give like insane PPM and pretty good PPV. But I'm not gonna do that because the issue with small pistons is that same with fuel. If you get hit in one part, which I'll show off here. Just turn this down to like 3000. If I get hit in one part of this steam engine, then suddenly it's borked. It's not generating any power at all. It's game over. I'll just repair this. So that's kind of how steam works, but small is not my cup of tea. What I like is big, big and bigger. So let's talk about large steam engines and why we're picking them for the Ragnarok. Before we can understand how to use large steam engines, we need to understand the difference between types of pistons. So with large steam, there are two types, serial and parallel. What's the main difference? The main difference is how your input ports, serial and parallel, your input ports are laid out and your output ports. Serial ports have input on one side and output on one side. You can tell which way the steam flows by the arrows on the side, whereas parallel has input on one side and output on the other, but opposite from each other, not in a straight line. And you can see this holds true on the other side as well. So what does this actually mean? Well, in order to make these engines efficient, as in to make them a four stage engine, for serial, you simply line them up with the arrows pointed to each other. For parallel, you have to kind of use steam pipes, like from the input to the output, to the input, the output, blah, blah, blah. But when you line these engines up, or say, if you line parallels up like you would serials, you don't get a staged engine. You get a very, very powerful engine. You can see here that parallel in a line with no pipes gets 377 PPM, but where is my thing? Oh, here it is. But 130 almost PPV. Compared to this to serial, which is great PPM, probably some of the best you'll find in the game at 778, and, but only 48 PPV. So, serial, when lined up like this with no pipes, is more efficient, and parallel is more power volume efficient. Whereas this is material efficient, this is volume efficient. So how is this working under the hood? Well. If you think of these engines as the same way as small engines, this is a serial engine or serial piston. There's one input and the steam goes from the input through the piston to the output to the next piston. But when you do the same thing with parallels, <clears throat> there's only one input. You can assume there's a boiler here on both of these. And these two pistons get equal distribution of that steam. This is because the inputs are all interconnected, so they all get the same steam pressure. You'll see here that the pressure gets lower and lower here. Eventually it's outputting 0 0.1, whereas these all have the same pressure. So this requires more steam, more materials, but creates a lot more power. This requires less steam, less materials. Creates a lot less power, but more efficiently. So that's the basic gist. Um, 
someone who's like a steam scientist can probably explain it better than me but just know that if you're lining your engines up parallel is ppv serial is ppm that's the main thing you got to know oh and side note just like you can get parallel to be ppm efficient this one is 780, which is par for the course, because these are made into stages. You can also make serial into PPV efficient by just kind of routing steam through them equally. And as you can see here, this is PPV efficient. So they're at the end of the, the end of the day, the same thing. They just have different input locations. Excuse me. So here's just a cool idea of something I invented. I, well, I didn't invent, but I created it. Here is a hybrid staged engine. So this engine uses serials. But these serials are, instead of being four pistons, or rather four stages, this is a two-stage setup, and then two of the two stages. Because each piston acts as a stage, rather than a piston. Like uh, like here where it's two pistons, but this is a stage. These two is a stage. These two is a stage. These two is a stage. Each piston is a stage. But anyway, so this is a hybrid setup. What this does is, uh, I guess I ran out of materials. Whoops. Is this engine can either run in pure serial format like this and get. 770 something let's see once it spools up yeah about 770 something at full load or using steam valves acbs and naming if this thing detects something in combat so we'll spawn a marauder just make sure it doesn't kill us you can see here that now we're generating a lot more power and this is like middle ground power which is not bad that's because it's two stages per section. I guess that's what I should call it as a section. So basically what happens is once we detect an enemy, then instead of going straight through, because this valve is open when there's no enemy detected, and this valve is closed, and this valve is closed, so that means the steam goes straight through and it's serial. When an enemy is detected, this valve opens, steam goes through these two, acts as a serial, goes all the way down here, this valve opens, and goes through here. So this kind of acts like, you know, two two-stage serial engines, which generates a lot more power per volume than just one. I don't think I'm going to use this on the Ragnarok. Um, this is a very cool idea. This is actually probably like the best of both worlds for, with a PPV and PPM. But the issue with this is it's not that redundant. So like it, just having pipes on steam is kind of a, a bad, bad thing if you're using large. Cause like these things have a lot of health, these steam pistons, let me pull it up. So these have like 9,000 health and 30 armor class cranks at 5,440. Like these things are beefy. They don't take a lot of damage, but steam pipes are not so beefy, like a hundred health and 20 armor. So let's say I take a hit here, and well, I guess I should actually hit the pipes. <laughs> oh, nope, it's because I'm not doing enough damage. Oh, my freaking god mode's on, that's why. Durr. Okay, let's say I take a hit, and I get hit in the pipes, and suddenly my engine is once again borked. But, let's say this guy takes a hit. He doesn't care. He keeps chugging along. You have to destroy an entire piston, which is a hard ask, to take this thing down. And even then, as long as some pistons are still running, you will still get power. So that's why I think if you're going to use large steam, and you know you're making the trade-off of you're gonna devote a lot of uh, a lot of space to large steam. You should make it as redundant as possible. So I'm going to go with versions of steam, large steam, that have no pipes. But I'm going to use both serial 
for cruising and parallel for combat. So I think with just uh, just a three piston parallel or three piston per side parallel, we get 80 and with a four stage serial we get like, or a, I guess eight pistons in four stages, we get almost 30. So like that's well over a hundred thousand in just pure power, which is way more than enough for the Ragnarok to handle. And it's kind of, kind of ideal in my opinion. You get the best of both worlds. When we don't need a crap ton of power, we just turn these off, and then we just run on these to power our engines or our propellers rather, and we cruise around the map at a comfortable like 780 BPM. But when things get a little frisky in combat and we need more power we simply turn this big boy on and suddenly we can power all our railguns shields um, lambs everything else we need so we'll be doing a a dual setup i think for our main source of power so let's just load the ragnarok in and i'll kind of show how i'm going to envision fitting it in so here we are in the citadel and you can see we have more 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 than enough space to fit in the, these engine configurations. So you can imagine the AI compartment being here. These will probably be lifted up in the Citadel so we can have lambs underneath because I'd like to have lambs in the Citadel. And uh, yeah, this fits perfectly. It's not too much space taken out. We still have space for like materials, maybe like auxiliary ammo storage because we're going to spread ammo throughout the ship. AI has more than enough space in the center. I think we can actually go further down in the Citadel. No. No, I just never finished the floor. But anyway, we have more than enough space, and this is going to work just fine for us. We have a power draw of somewhere in the, like, 100,000, and then an energy draw of something in the range of, like, I want to say 40, 50. So if we have the extra room and we decide to I can fit this with steam turbines just all throughout here like on the sides or I'll probably put steam turbines in the uh, the little compartments in the back here or the front here wherever there's not auxiliary guns because we have so much space we have insane amount of space <laughs> for just a bunch of random crap but yeah that's just a basic rundown of how to do engines and what we're gonna do we're doing large steam. That's <laughs> that's it. How predictable. If only Rabaz knew about how great large steam was. I don't know. Maybe they didn't have large steam back then. But uh, his engine was miserable to say the least and did not use very much of his space efficiently. And why is his why was his AI up here? Come on, man. That's above your waterline. Come on. But anyway, <laughs> that'll be it for this video. On the next video, we'll probably start designing some more uh, systems again. We'll probably... Left in the series, we need lambs, sea whiz, we need to shield the Ragnarok, we need to implement the AI, we need to make sure everything's EMP safe, a whole bunch of things. So just kind of let me know what you want to see next. I'm kind of at the point where I can make anything. We could start doing secondaries and sea whiz, we could start doing lambs, we can start doing missiles if we want missiles on this thing. Sky's the limit here, boys. And gals or whatever you decide. But, uh, yeah. Let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe. I hope you learned something today. If you didn't, well, I'm sorry. If you did, then I'm very glad. And I hope you enjoy these videos. I'll see you on the next time.